Hello everybody, welcome to the 3K channel. I'm your host David and welcome to the 2020 Christmas special. Now, the Christmas special is not going to be that exciting. Um, in previous years we've done like a uh, we've done uh, 30k AT, I think, for the last couple of years. And prior to that, we did a big game. And, you know, with obviously the, the world in lockdown and, and the coronavirus hitting, uh, that's put a bit of a kibosh on the old... Um, on the old Christmas special. Now you could have said to me, well, you know, why don't you, why didn't you film the Christmas special way back in November or, or between lockdowns and stuff? And yep, you're absolutely right. But if I'm honest, it just would have been Boris and I. <laughs> so <laughs> we're bearers, Imperial Fist, Mechanicum, uh, uh, and Iron Hands. Now, I just thought that maybe you've seen a bit too much of that and, and I would do uh, a different Christmas special uh, and talk about where the channel's at, where it's going, uh, because something really big is happening to me next year and uh, what what happens to me affects the channel massively. So I really wanted to talk about that. But also as well, uh, every week I get loads of questions from you guys uh, from either comments on YouTube or uh, comments or, or from subscribers or I just get general emails from friends or people I know and say, look, hey, you know, have you done this? Have you, can I take a look at that? What about this? What about that? And why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I just thought this would be a really great way of just kind of summarizing the year, talk about some current stuff, talk about some future stuff, um, and try and answer some of those questions. Because I think sometimes the reason why we do things on the channel, there is a really, really massive reason. And I haven't kind of alluded to that over this last year because it, it, the channel, my future, has been a little bit uncertain. So now it's all kind of locked down and sorted, no pun intended. Um, I, I want to tell you guys about it because. At the moment, I'm going for. I'm reaching out to people from different parts of the country and the world to kind of help me with this next transitional period. So, which I really want to talk to you about. Um, but first of all, big news! Uh, it is Boxing Day. I think it's about eleven o'clock. I've ate all the food I can eat. Uh, we had a vegetarian Christmas, which was really nice. Not having to have all that meat, beef, and turkey just sat on my stomach all day. So, I've ate lots of vegetables and stuff, and it was really nice. So. Really loved that. Had a couple of beers, which was fantastic. And now I'm a bit bored and I thought, well, I need to get these videos done. So Boxing Day is the perfect time to do this. So Boxing Day, 11 o'clock, as I said, um, and just before Christmas, Christmas Eve, Forge World released Soul Tarvitz. How exciting is that? The model is fantastic. Um, but there was a few rumours, you know, Soul Tarvitz is in plastic. It looks plastic. And I, and I do you know what? The, the sculpt was so crisp and that base, that rock and that skull that he stood on, to me that looked like plastic. I was like, wow, you know, could this be the beginning of a new box, a new starter set led by Sol Tarvitz, um, loyalist emperor children. Uh, but alas, it was not meant to be. It is in resin. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I am so happy for Emperor's Children players to get Sol Tarvitz because he plays such a massive part in the heresy and he's really key. He's like one of the one of the one of the good guys right to the very end, which is really cool. So super pleased. Uh, a little bit disappointed that it's not in plastic, but at the end of the day, any model out of four year old is fantastic. So plastic resin, I do not care. However, <laughs> I have one gripe. He has an AP5 sword. That is rough. Okay, it's duelist edge, two-handed, uh, and it's rending, of course. But might I remind you where we first saw Sol Tarvitz? That's right, you guessed it. All the way back in book one. Ooh -wee. I don't even remember when book one came out. It was that long ago. However, you know, it's only taken eight books to get to Sol Tarvitz. So, you know, I think, the, uh, I think the saying there, the best things come to those who wait, but whew, nine books is tough, eh? <laughs> anyway, um, you know, 135 points, um, artificial armor, sniper rifle, modified bolter in brackets, whatever that means, bolter, charnable broadsword. I mean, it's, it's rough. You know, you can get a centurion at 50 points base and then give him a power weapon for 15 points and... You know, okay, this guy's got a better weapon skill than an uh, extra wound, but it's a bit rough, really, isn't it? Anyway, I'm really pleased with Imperials and players. I'm so happy you've got Sol Tarvitz. And obviously, as we move towards Terra, spoiler alert, 
um, hopefully Seoul will play uh, a part in the in the Siege of Terror. So very, very excited for that. So I wanted to talk about that, get that out of the way with. Very exciting, very cool. Next up, some very exciting news for myself, my girlfriend and our dog. Um, this has been a long time coming and I've talked to a few people in the community that have come over to the channel about it. Um, and I'm not going to drag it out too long because I don't want this like bit to be right at the end. Although I do still want to keep watching after I've made my announcement because we've got lots of questions to answer and there's a bit more of a show after this. But I want to address it right now because a lot of the questions that you've asked me over the last year, um, the reason why we haven't done some of those things, which would have made sense a year ago, have been all kind of to this point. So I really want to get this out of the way and sort of tell you guys about it. Um, so some of you may or may not notice have a slight accent uh it was a lot stronger eight years ago than it is today uh but um i i moved to new zealand in 2005 um had an amazing time there i was there for seven years in total till 2012 uh, and then i got offered a really amazing job to come back to the uk uh, and then I was in that job for a couple of years and then I went to the last job I just left, which was working for a, a large uh, engine manufacturer, um, small engine manufacturer. Uh, and I was there for about four years, I think. Uh, and, and during that time, during that four years, I was in a financial position to start the channel. So about two years into that job, I filmed the first battle report uh, and, 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 and the channel is how it, how it is. Now, uh, doing a very full on job uh, like that was really intense as well as running the channel. Uh, and the two clashed quite often, both in my personal life, uh, my social life, and my working life. So the channel had a massive impact on my life, uh, for good and for bad, you know. Uh, uh, anyway, it, the decision was made that I, I left my old job, which was a, a fantastic job, very creative, very, very cool job. It was the job of my dreams, I'm not gonna lie. When I got the job, I thought, this is me for the next 20 years, easy peasy. However, the channel started and, and my kind of, my focus shifted, you could say. So, so here we are four years later, or four and a bit years later, uh, I'm now on the channel. I do a different job, it's part-time, uh, and I work on the channel part-time. Uh, but for the last couple of years, uh, New Zealand has been calling to me. Uh, it, I've, I, I follow quite a few social media accounts for New Zealand, and I, I have a couple of friends in New Zealand, and, and, uh, and I've always wanted to go back. Now, when the channel started, uh, I, I just thought that because of the way the channel films games, uh, we pull from the community. So all the people that have been on the channel have pretty much been from the UK community, a couple of guys from America and Canada and, uh, and Europe, which has been fantastic. But the, the channel's uh, focus has always been about showcasing heresy uh, uh, by the community and I host it and you obviously know the format, which is great. However, I really wanna continue doing heresy and the 30K channel, but I really wanna to move to New Zealand as well. So uh, it's been a real tough one for me. Um, there was lots of options on the table. I was gonna stop the channel uh, and then I was gonna do something else because I have lots of other things in my life I would like to do. Uh, and doing the channel is massively full-time. So, well, it's full-time, but I still work a job. So it's, it's really tough. My time is super, super busy. I work sort of 60 hours a week doing part-time and this as well. Um, and there's a lot more reasons, but I'm gonna get into those when I answer your questions later. So it's kind of a, a long explanation. Anyway, so uh, this year, uh, my partner and I, or the last year and a half rather, we've been saving mad to get as much money as we can to kind of make this move over to New Zealand. Because it's not cheap, it's a little bit more expensive uh, cost of living over there and um, and both my girlfriend and I have been working crazy hours to try and accumulate as much money as possible to save to go. So we need quite a lot of money. I don't want to discuss it too much, but um, we're, we're nearly there. So um, we're in December at the moment and uh, we had planned to be in New Zealand last month, so November 2020. But because the lockdown happened and, and coronavirus and all that sort of jazz, um, my partner's visa application got delayed by six months. So uh, I had hoped to have had this conversation with you nearly six months ago, uh, but obviously it's not happened and we're still in the UK. So uh, all the visas come through now. We've got some little things to sort out, uh, but we will be flying to New Zealand pending any lockdown or, or any fifth, 20th wave, who knows, uh, we'll be flying to New Zealand on the 1st of June, which is really, really exciting for us. Um, and the channel will continue. So you're asking yourself, well, what does that mean for me? I'm a subscriber, I want to subscribe, or you know, where does that, where does that leave battle reports on the 30K channel? So what it means is, is that 
I, when we move, I hope to hire someone full time uh, in Auckland. I want to move to Auckland. I lived there before. Fantastic place. I want to go back there again. Um, I hope to hire someone full time, and then that person and I will uh, continue content a game every week without fail, as we've always done apart from this lockdown period, but I've still produced content. So all of these little shows I've done, Corona Chronicles, you know, Back to School, um, I can't remember the names of them, Back to School, Set in the Scene, and Firefight, they will continue, but they will continue in a different version, hopefully developed by this other person. Um, all of the armies will be brought in house. I'm a reasonable painter, I'm not the best painter in the entire world, but I'm also not the worst. Um, so. I have brought, over the last two years, I have accumulated a huge pile of resin. Solar Auxilla, Mechanicum, and Space Marine Legion stuff. I've got loads and loads and loads. So every month I've brought a battle tank here, or a squad of Marines here, or some Terminators, whatever. And it's slowly built up, so I've got a ton of models. Um, so moving forward, the, the channel will produce all games in-house from July onwards, I would say, next year, 2021. And it will just be myself and this other person. And what that allows us to do is that allows us to film a game Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, edit Thursday, maybe Friday, and then get a game out to you Friday. And then we'll have a massive backlog. So things like this, like a, like a lockdown situation, that won't affect us because we can be together and we can film that content. Because... Uh, pulling um, people from the community is great, but it's also really, really stressful because people have their own lives and sometimes they cancel, sometimes they don't. Sometimes a game doesn't go that well because two people haven't met each other and it's really hard for people to have that on-screen chemistry. Uh, I think the channel has been accused in the past, only by a couple of people, of being a bit formal. And I totally agree with you because I'm a formal person. I'm not a very... I'm not a very bantery type person uh, and I wanted the channel to be fairly full because there are lots of the channels out there that aren't and I just felt that you know I'm a guy in my 40s or at the time I was in my late 30s I was a bit more perhaps uh, I go a classic English stereotype a bit stuffy a bit uptight uh, uh, but that's not a bad thing because with that become comes quality and a bit of professionalism I'm not saying other battle reports aren't but I just think I just think it's it's a different offering. And maybe if you're not keen on that kind of format stuffy style, there are loads of really awesome bat report channels out there that will give you that kind of banter style bat rep um, uh, that can be found out there. Anyway, I'm going off the point. It will also allow the channel to film other game systems. Now, I had developed a really awesome way of filming uh, Aeronautica Imperialis. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much because it's it, it's ready to go more or less. It just needs a little tweak here and there. But I need someone every day for a couple of weeks just bashing games out and making sure it works and getting the film camera angles right and getting all the editing right. There is a ton of editing for Aeronautica Imperialis. It is so heavy editing. It's unbelievable. But it works the way it works. It's a little bit with uh, Adeptus Titanicus. Boris, who does Adeptus Titanicus for me, his editing, that game is mad on the editing with the you know the uh, the computer consoles and the little icons and stuff. So we've got all that for Aeronautica Imperialis. Um, and the beauty about that is a lot of the Imperial stuff can be found in, in, in 30K. So there is a really great crossover, which I'm hoping to film, uh, and that should have been released last uh, earlier this year in June, maybe. But because of everything that's happened, it just couldn't be released because it didn't quite work. I didn't have enough time on it. And I didn't want to produce something that was half-assed. It had to be perfect almost, but it just wasn't It wasn't quite there. So with this second person, we can develop lots more stuff. And because there's two of us, I'm not going to be tired all the time. Um, and we can definitely focus on doing additional stuff. But also as well... You know, I film these shows and I film these set in the scenes and firefights and stuff. But what you don't see is you don't see the hundreds of text messages to people saying, well, what about this? What about that? What if I do that? How does that rule interact with that? Because I can't know everything. I know a little bit, but I can't know everything. So when you've got someone right next to you, you can bounce ideas off. They say, oh, no, that's rubbish or that doesn't quite work. Or sometimes I'll, when I play the thalax, I miss the blind rule. So it's good to have someone say, oh, don't forget your blind check, you know, that sort of thing. So... Um, it really helped having someone to to be there. Like Boris and I, when we did uh, Fall of the Aeon Bite, uh, that was really cool. And when Alistair and I did, um, I can't remember the name of it, Harvest on the Black Sands, you know, they have been the two most popular battle reports on the channel ever, both on YouTube and on the, on the, on the website. 
because you guys love narrative campaigns and they were kind of the channel's first kind of foray into 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 kind of campaign stuff so what well, other than obviously the space balls um thousand suns with uh dan and pete really cool series if you haven't seen it um so so this is really really great news for you guys because you will get more content more game systems but heavily focused around 30k a lot of people have said oh you know why don't you do necromunda you've got the scenery for it do necromunda uh, why don't you just why don't you do that and yeah you are right but we are the 30k channel and we could branch out and do 40k, but there are guys out there doing an amazing job with 40k. Plus, I can't afford however many armies there are in 40k. I mean, there's, I don't know, 20, 25 armies. Who knows? Um, so it's all about cost at the end of the day. You know, I have to stick to what I know as well. Um, but we will bring in new games. I have commissioned the new Warcry Catacomb set uh, with a guy in New Zealand a guy called Sloan Ranger. Um, he's a fantastic uh, artist based in Wellington. Um, and he is painting up a set of war cry. Now, that might not work, but I want I want a set painted, and then we're going to film a couple of games and see if it works. And if it works, then there could be an avenue to do sort of the smaller specialist war cry stuff. But the absolute priority of the channel has to be 30k. We are the 30k channel. It has to be 30k. So there might be an opportunity to do some spin-offs, but we will focus on 30k, as I said. Also. Moving to New Zealand, there is a small community, uh, primarily in Auckland, but there are in other parts of the country that are really enthousi enthusiastic about heresy. I'm in a little group with those guys and they've got some fantastic armies on there and we will still accept guests, of course, because that is where the channel was founded and we will pull from the community in Auckland to film those games. So I'm really excited to, to share um, those games with that community there in Auckland. Um, and uh, looking further afield as well, you know, there's places in Christchurch uh, and Wellington that the channel could perhaps travel to and film games uh, showcasing the uh, different heritage communities around the country, which would be really cool. Now, also as well, uh, New Zealand is really close to Australia. Now, that is super exciting because uh, some of the books and the events that have come out of Australia is absolutely phenomenal. You know, they've got the Mournavale events guys there. Um, you've got, obviously got um, Eye of Horus podcast. Um, so it's a really big community over there as well. And my my hope, and please don't hold me to this, but my hope is to fly over to Sydney sometime at the end of next year, maybe, depending on well about travel between Australia and New Zealand with lockdown and stuff. If I've got a quarantine in Auckland and then quarantine in Sydney for two weeks, that's a month gone. That's just not feasible. So um, hopefully if there's free, uh, freedom of travel between the two countries, my plan would be to set up a, a lockup or storage unit and essentially keep a second booth with a second lot of terrain in Australia. And then I would fly over to Australia I don't know, in March or sorry, uh, August, for example, pick up stuff in a trailer, hire a car, travel to X club outside of Sydney, film two weeks worth of games there. So, you know, perhaps a 3K game over two nights, Monday and Tuesday with Bob and Bert, and then, you know, Wednesday, Thursday with Fred and Alice, I don't know. Um, and then take that content, bring it back to New Zealand, edit it, and then showcase uh, the Australian heresy on the 30K channel website. So, that's the plan, big, big plans, uh, but really, really exciting. I think it'd be really awesome to showcase other countries' heresy. Um, I'd like to say I could travel the world to America and showcase heresy there, but that's just, just not gonna happen. But uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, I've not even been to Australia, so for me, it's, it's gonna be really cool. Um, I am in conversation with quite a few people in Australia uh, to try and look at hotels and where's the best place to kind of catch three or four different clubs or whatever. and. Um, the biggest problem with Australia, of course, is it's such a vast country. So, you know, if you're traveling from Sydney to Brisbane, I don't know how long it is, but it's probably a two day drive, isn't it? Two, three day drive. It's humongous. So uh, there is some uh, some geographical issues there with filming in Australia. But I think the majority will perhaps focus around Sydney. Then if people want to come in for games, you know, they can fly up into Sydney. I don't know. That needs to be sorted out. But um We'll see. But it's a really, really exciting time for me, my partner, uh, and obviously the 30K channel as well. So so again, what does that mean for you? Um, it means that uh, if you're in the UK and you want to come on the 30K channel for a battle report of your very own, um, first of all, lockdown needs to be restricted, uh, needs to be gone. Or if 
we're in the same tiers as each other. So I'm in Huntingdon, which is near Cambridge. That is in tier two. So if you are in tier two uh, and you're willing to create a bubble with me, um, I will create a bubble with you. Uh, I won't see my family or friends and you won't see your family or friends for a, a, a period or however the government decides, um, then we can film that report. And so because the channel's moving to New Zealand, the uh, the channel is being shipped on the f uh, the first week in April because it takes could take up to two months uh, to get to New Zealand. Uh, so I will take bookings from January, I guess, but it depends on the restrictions, uh, through to March. Now, you're going to say to me, well, that's fine. Hopefully we'll produce content soon. And if not, I will produce content on my own for you guys. Uh, but you might think, well, you know, what about battle reports for the period that you're away? Now, I have provisionally booked two weeks uh, in March with two different people uh, and providing lockdown will allow uh, and the bubbling system, of course, uh, they are going to travel uh, to Huntington and film a ton of games of me in that two week period. And hopefully if we can start filming again in January, February, I'll film every weekend, Saturday, Sunday and during the week if we need to to build up enough content to last for that period where the channel's being shipped from March to June and maybe into July, because by the time I get to Auckland, I need to have a little holiday because I've been very stressed this year. Um, uh, I need to build the channel back up again, uh, get everything set up. I need to buy some equipment and get it all ready. So the channel probably won't be ready to start filming in July. I need to go for a whole series of interviews, hopefully, if we get some applicants for the job, um, and then we can start filming in July. So I'll need to create enough content and when I mean content, I mean battle reports um, to last from March to June, mid-July maybe. So there is a ton of planning, um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll all come off. There is a ton of work going on behind the scenes, both with my partner and I to get ourselves sorted and set up. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about it because you won't be interested, I promise you. Uh, but we are getting there. So... Hopefully that hasn't upset you too much. I don't need to feel that you're missing out because content will continue. Um, don't forget, in, in New Zealand, though, there is no lockdown. So um, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> They're quite effective about uh, combating the virus. So uh, they kicked it out quite early on and people have just pretty much gone back to normal now. No face masks and people can meet at clubs and people's homes and stuff. So that's really exciting. I know that's six months away, but we just don't know how long this is going to continue. But, um, but hey, here we go. So that's my exciting news. I've really been wanting to share that with you for quite a long time, uh, but it just hasn't been possible until today. So I thought it'd be a really nice announcement, announcement to, uh, to talk about on the show. That's done now. I'm so relieved <laughs> that I could share that with you. It's a, a massive weight off my shoulders because, you know, I, I was so worried that you, you guys might think, ah, oh, get rid of this guy. He's gone. He's abandoned us in the UK. He doesn't care. And, that, and that's not the case at all. I, you know, I, I've given four years of my life to this channel and, you know, it, it's been successful, thankfully. And, um, and I've got you guys to thank for that. So thank you so much for your support. Um, I would be moving to New Zealand regardless whether the channel was working or not. Um, it, it's just a life dream of mine to, to live there finally forever instead of kind of flitting backwards and forwards like I did before in those seven years. So, uh, so for me, it's, it's huge. But what that does mean, though, is, is a lot of the questions you have asked, as I mentioned earlier, um, have had to bear this in mind. So I, I've got a huge list in front of me, sort of like an auto cue style. I'm going to go through those questions that you've asked me, and, and hopefully you will get some context behind those answers now. Because, um, and I'll give you an example. So that one of the biggest, the biggest, biggest questions, requests is dice rolling. Um, now, dice rolling is a massive integral part of the game, as we all know who plays this game. And it is so exciting when you're firing that multi-misser on your rhino and you roll a one for the fourth time in, in four turns to hit, or you roll a one to wound or to a double one on your penetrate. It is heartbreaking. But these happen in game. You know, you want to move through cover. You've got a super engineered space marine and you roll uh, a double one on your charge. It's just heartbreaking. And it's those highs and lows that really make a game of 30k. Now, in the beginning, the channel filmed all the dice rolls. And in my opinion, it was too much. And then we kind of shifted to film some dice rolls, which I felt was a really good balance, like the really important or key ones, or ones that we knew were going to be funny, you know, I don't know, uh, 40 bolter shots into the back of a rhino. How many times can you hit? How many sixes you can roll to glance a rhino out? Or, you know, that sort of thing. So that's really exciting. So uh, we try to do a lot of those. But 
as the as the channel went on and we got more guests on, um, and when guests come onto the channel, they want to film a big game. They want to film 3K, 3.5K, 4K. And we can absolutely do that. But you have to remember, a game takes about 10 hours to film. If it's your first time and you've not really narrated Battle Reports report before or you've not been in sort of a filming environment, then that environment can be super stressful for, for any guests. I try to make the day as relaxed as possible. But ultimately, I know in the back of my head, there is so much to do. And, and because I like things in a particular process... Um, it's really hard to get a grip of. And if, if it's your first time, then, then that can be really difficult. So I have to balance a factually correct game rule-wise, and we don't always get it right. It's not a perfect rule set, I'll add as well, um, with dice rolls and uh, character uh, engagement with the two players because they may not have met each other. One might be from Brighton, one might be from Scotland. They've never met before. Their only common interest really is the game. Okay, they might have kids or dogs or pets or cars or whatever, but generally we're here to play a game. So um, so it, there's a lot that goes on to kind of make those two people feel quite comfortable and and reproduce a format that I need because... One of the things I'm most proud of is that a game that was filmed six months ago is very, very similar to a game that's filmed today. And I draw my inspiration from uh, from the news, the BBC or whatever news channel you watch. You know, the presenter always comes on. Hi, my name's. Uh, welcome to the six o'clock news or the 10 o'clock news or whatever. And it follows a really familiar format. And I myself like that familiar format and I know other other people do. And, and I think that's what makes the channel successful is that consistency of production. You know, we could have wild laughing and hands up in the air and crazy dice rolling and all sorts. But, you know, that, that becomes increasingly hard to capture. And, and I think, as I mentioned earlier as well, the channel's kind of been a bit accused of being a little bit stuffy and a little bit, a um, little bit straight laced maybe. But that's just my point of difference because there are other channels out there that have, you know, super excited, super enthusiastic, a little bit over the top in my opinion, maybe. Uh, but then I'm, you know, I'm a stuffy English guy. I can't, I can't help my personality. But I just think sometimes it's really, really hard to focus what's happening with the game because I watch Battle Reports as a, as a factual uh, as a factual uh, piece of film, I guess. You know, I want to know what happens when 20 bolters hits the back of a rhino. Or I want to see other players missing all of their multi-melter shots with uh, with a 10-man squad uh, of multi-melter armed marines or melter armed marines. You know, so from that, that's how I approach the channel. And then to add in all those dice rolls as well is really, really difficult because as well, some people can't get it. And that's not a criticism of people. Some guys that come on the channel, there's so much to do, so much to remember. They're conscious of their rules because they watch battle reports and they hate rules inaccuracies. So they would rather make sure they got their rules factually correct for me, for the channel, for them, and for you guys, ultimately the viewers. And so sometimes, you know, firing five las cannons into the side, into the front of a of a flare shielded land raider, um, and remembering that you can only cause glances on it. Um, on a flare shielded land raider and not pens is hard and, and people can't remember the um the uh, damage chart plus one ap1 ap2 plus one plus two and then you've got to remember the damage chart and then to get that really fluid if you blow the spartan up after hit on the side because you can't do it from the front with the flare shield you know um right the land raider is blown up will roll for scatter la 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 hits four marines fours to hit four you know wins on fours ap blower it's a huge amount. And if you've not done it before, it's a massive amount of pressure. And dice rolls, unfortunately, just take a massive amount of time to do. So that's why I've got rid of dice rolls, or majority of them, because it's hard. Unless I've had two people that have been on channel loads, and they're really proficient in the rules, and they're really fast at dice rolling. Like Boris and I are, all of our games pretty much have included dice rolls between Boris and I, because we're, we're used to each other's personality, we know how each other persons play, and we can really whack those, those dice rolls out really quickly. And you'll see as well, I've started to put the dice tray on the corner of the screen. Moving forward, when I get a full-time person, that will happen every game. There will be dice rolls, not every single one, uh, but there will be dice rolls, uh, and it will be at the bottom of the screen. Because you know, you've got a point where, because of the way I build terrain, you can't always put the dice tray or roll dice on the board. So we've got a film here, and then we've got a cutaway to the dice. So you get that kind of movement feeling, which... 
as some of you have said in your comments, makes you feel sick. And I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> but, you know, to have a second camera set up and then when you go in, you've got to then, when you go into edit, you've got to lay that on top of your initial story. You've got to sync it. And then you've got to decide at what point which is the best for the dice. And then you've, when you film, you've got to then remember that you've got a dice tray in the bottom left or the bottom right. And then you've got to angle your camera, angle your camera so the action's here. And then you're not covering up the dice tray that comes up here. So it's quite a complicated thing. I can do it. It's not a problem. But when you've got to explain that to two people that have been on the channel for the first time and they've got so much going on in their head, it's virtually impossible. So short answer Dice ones are returning, I promise. Um, and I have developed a bit of a top-down system which works, uh, and I've used it in uh, Aeronautica Imperialis, um, and it works really well. So that won't happen until we move. And the reason why is because it takes a little bit of setup. I don't have a lot of room where I am right now. I'm in a spare bedroom in a three-bedroom house, um, and it's not ideal. And the booth that I will build in the next house will be a lot bigger and will house lots of crazy stuff that will help us do a lot more. Next question, specialist games. All right, so uh, we did a survey about two years ago, uh, and on the whole, you guys said, look, stay 30K, you're the 30K channel, do 30K. I 100% agree with you, 100%. Um, however, I would like to deviate into other, other games because in my mind, the channel will grow and it will do other game systems. I will stay on 30K, but Bob might do Aeronautic Imperialis, Bert, who's part-time, might do Warcry. Fred might do something else and something else. So um, I definitely think that's a long-term plan. But as an exercise, when I filmed Aeronauts Comprialis, I learned a lot from that. And a lot of that will filter into 30K, how I filmed it, some overlays and some various bits and bobs. So although, although we might not do Warcry, having stuff commissioned and painted and building a unique battlefield for Warcry will feed into 30K. It's like Formula One, you know, all this crazy technology you get in Formula One eventually filters down to your car, which you drive today when you drive to Tesco and back in. So the stuff I'm doing, although it might not make the channel in the future, I mean, in the next six months, it might make it in the far future. But a lot of that stuff I'm learning doing that will transport into 30K. So essentially, I do want to do specialist games, I can't do specialist games right now because I'm one person. When I get to New Zealand, I will be two people, but Heresy will be our absolute focus and uh, Adeptus Titanicus. Um, but then, as a little side project, we will develop other games. And I'm really hoping to get Aeronautica Imperialis out. It might not make, it might not be every week, but you might get an odd game here or there. But the stuff and the models you can do with Aeronautica Imperialis will absolutely filter into narrative campaigns that will link into 30k, Adeptus Titanicus, and Aerodorsk Imperialis. I promise you. That should have been released this year. I haven't had someone to help me with it. It hasn't happened, but it will happen next year. I promise. 40k. Now, oh, 40k. What a crazy game. The models for 40k are unbelievable. I absolutely love them. They are fantastic. I'm not so keen on the rule set. That's my personal preference, and I'm sure hundreds of you are shouting at the screen, it's a better rule set, 30K is inferior, la 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 la. I do disagree with you, of course, I have to, because I really do enjoy heresy. And a lot of people have said to me, why don't you do 40K? The fact of the matter is, everybody does 40K, and there are a couple of channels out there that do 40K amazingly and i won't even come close to their 40k because they've they're so well established now they've got resource they've got staff they've got purpose-built studio and equipment you probably know who i'm talking about but they do an amazing job and if i started on 40k it just it's just not worth doing it but also if i did you wouldn't get any 30k content so uh as much as i love the models of 40k it's just not possible for me to do it Maybe in 10 years' time, where we've made a little bit more money and we can pay someone to film 40K than maybe. And you have to remember as well, you know, the channel makes money and it has to because I cannot afford this hobby uh, out of my, to the level that I do it, out of a, a normal wage in the UK. Just can't do it. And for the last three or four years, I have supplemented the channel massively through my salary. So I would get X amount of money a month and 
you'd pay your essentials, food, electricity, fuel, blah, 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 all the boring stuff. And then you'd have a reasonable bit left, but then 90% of that would be put onto the channel to buy stuff. And then I'd end up with a little bit for going out, having a few drinks and saving up for a holiday sort of thing. So um, it, 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 to do it to this level is massive. So if you're a bloke in your garage and you've got a camera and you've got mates with some models, amazing, fantastic. But it will never get to this sort of point where we've got lights and studios and that sort of thing. There are some great people doing some great stuff out there, but um, the channel needs to make money because if it doesn't make money, the channel folds overnight. It's as simple as that. And it's a shame that it's so precarious, but, um, but that's just the reality of it. So for me to move into another game system, you need to have a reasonable stock, you need to have the time to paint the stock, uh, and then you need to film the games, which is time, effort, and money. And they are three things I don't really have to go into another system too deeply, like 40K. We can do the specialist stuff because it is an amazingly cheap way into the hobby. You know, uh, I think an Air Force for Aeronautic Imperiality is about 100 quid, then the box set, 200 quid in a bit of time, amazing. Um, but 40K, it is costs are just huge. I can't afford 40k. So 40k, no, that will not happen. Not at least in the next five years. So please stop asking me about 40k. A lot of you have asked me to do um, additional shows, such as unboxings, law reviews, um, terrain reviews, model reviews, everything review. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of people on YouTube doing that very same thing. Now. Some of them are fantastic. Um, I don't know the name of the guy. I'll put his link at the bottom, but there's a guy, I think he's Australian, uh, an older gentleman, probably late 50s. I don't want to insult him too much. Massive beard. And he does the best unboxings I have ever seen. He's so funny. He's very charismatic. And if I'm honest, I couldn't come close to him. So I'm not even going to bother doing unboxings. Um, also as well, you have to have the stock. And let's face it, <laughs> it sounds awful. Not a lot of stock comes out of Forge World, you know? And, uh, and, and I'm collecting Death Guard and Solo Auxilla at the moment. There hasn't been a Solo Auxilla or Death Guard model for ages. So I could buy some Dark Angels when they come out and I could buy Soul Tarvits when he comes out and I could buy this when it comes out and that and that and that. But then all of that money I'm buying these models with, um, I've then got to do a review, which will be five minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, and then I'm left with a Salt of its model, or I'm left with a tank that won't necessarily fit into my Death Guard or Sologzer army. So I'm left with all these tons of models. What am I to do with them? Well, I could give them away in a competition. Absolutely right, 100% could. But then I'm just giving any profit away to you guys, which is fine, but you're not going to get any models for the studio armies and you're not going to get a new camera and we won't get a new piece of lighting or a piece of software I need to do the battle report. So for me, doing unboxings and review is really expensive. Um, Games Workshop is famously good for uh, giving codexes and, and box sets away to YouTubers and for other channels to do reports on. Or maybe they've got a link to... Um, to a shop and they give them pre-release and they can do the things there. And that's great, but if you're into heresy, it's all resin, 90% of it's resin. So you don't get that interaction from Forge World with a YouTuber or a, or, or, or a channel and that sort of thing. So the reason why I don't do those is one, because I can't afford them and then I'm left with models I can't do with, uh, with stuff with them other than giving them away. But then as I said, I mentioned I'm giving away my profit for the investing equipment. Um, and, and, and two, I don't want to align myself with a store mainly because I knew I was leaving the country. So I didn't want to be, oh, hi, um, David 30K channel here based in New Zealand, but hey, go to this shop in the UK. They sell X, Y, and Z products. Um, but also I felt a little bit disingenuous if I did that, but also as well, I don't want to be tied to a supplier. I don't want them to have to say to me, well, hang on a minute, we gave you five box sets last month for review. We now want you to do a review on this tape measure we've got in stock, all this, all this dice. And, and what I didn't want to do, I didn't end up being, oh, this tape measure is amazing. You know, it's a 50 pound tape measure. It does the most amazing things. Whereas I just use a Games Workshop tape better because I genuinely believe they are the best tape measures out there. Okay, they do break off the end. It's a pain, but they're five quid. I like the feel of them and they are amazing. Okay, I've just done Games Workshop major ad there, but I didn't want to take stuff from a shop 
and the bloke says, oh, you've got to do this ad because we gave you. I didn't want to be held over a barrel and that's why I've not aligned myself with a store. And also as well, the only thing I'm getting from that store is, is scenery. And I don't use Games Workshop scenery much. I, I use a lot, some of it, but not a lot of it. I'm not a massive fan of it. Um, some of it's good, some of it's not. So, so that's why I haven't done reviews. Maybe it's something we could do in the future. Um, but I like to be independent. That's I think for me that's really really important because you will get my honest review. And I did a review of the uh, Forge World boards uh, for Adeptus Titanicus. Amazing as they are there are some real fundamental flaws of them which which is tough because they are an amazing when you look at it on the face of it they're amazing but i think they're uh they're a very tough item to justify so i try to be honest as much as possible and i don't want to have a manufacturer in the back of my head or a shop in the back of my head saying well we really need a good review because we need to shift these 50 pound tech measures or we've got these new dice in we really want you to do the dice and stuff so that's why i've not done unboxing and reviews maybe when Games Workshop or Forge World release a new plastic box set, fingers crossed, um, we might do something there. But um, for the meantime, that will not happen. There is an opportunity maybe in the future when moving to New Zealand, the channel might split off and do something completely different to 30K. Um, I mean, talks to some people about that at the moment, but I won't be doing any of that. That will be someone else. Um, and that's a whole different kettle of fish. But anyway, we'll talk about it later. Maybe six, seven, eight months time. Uh, next question, showcases. The Army Focus has been a really great success. People have loved those, and it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, there has been a couple of issues with those shows. Um, not enough close-up photos. Um, perhaps not, not in-depth too much, but also... Uh, I'm heavily reliant on the persons whose army is here for them to go in depth about their army. So maybe I need to ask some different questions, maybe, so we could look at doing that. Uh, but you want better photos. And I agree with you. The photos um, are good, uh, but they're not the best they can be. And to do that, I need a new camera and I need uh, a little photo setup, a proper one. Now, for those of you who have been on the channel uh, and you visited in my house, you'll know that we've got a big black backdrop that's kind of a, uh, a curved surface. Uh, and we take your army photos there. I have not been for happy with those photos for a very, very long time. It needs a proper setup with some decent lights uh, and a separate area, because at the moment it's all done in my front room, my front living room. When we move to New Zealand and we move into a purpose-built area, a studio, if you want to call it, um, I will have that ability to do it. So we'll get a better camera and the photos will be 10 times better. And they, uh, a lot of you said as well, you wanted the photos on there for a lot longer. Yep, totally agree. Uh, that will change. However, the fundamental flaw of that is, is obviously we rely on people to come on the channel to showcase their armies. There aren't that many armies in Auckland, uh, but we will do a load of army showcases in Australia when we visit there. So, you know, there'll be a ton more to come, but they perhaps won't be as regularly as I liked. They might be two or three every three or four months or something i don't know or one every six weeks or something but they will return i will try and film as many army focuses as possible in the uk before we leave or before the sh channel ships in march uh, but again it's subject to quarantining and bubbling and etc it'd be really tough for someone to bubble with me um and do all the isolation before and after just to come over and film four hours of their army focus so uh they will get better and i've learned a lot of lessons from doing those original ones. So they will return. Next question I get asked all the time is, can I film uh, law videos, um, obscure lists, and also like Tactica and stuff like that? Now, I can, but when I play a game of 30K, I play with my heart and not with my head, okay? Now, I'm sure some of you are the same, but a lot of you, will play very tactically in your mind and you will think, right, I'm going to chuck 20 bolters at a five-man unit. I'm going to hit with X, hit with Y, wound Y, then I'll kill them, la, 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 la. I don't play like that. I play quite emotively. So for me to sit down and rattle through stats and tactica and me tell you how to play your game, I don't think is right. Um, one, because I'm not very good at the game, if I'm perfectly honest here. I do tend to lose more than I win but that is mainly down to my list choice because I choose a list full of models that I like 
rather than models that make sense. So if we have a quick look back to my Legio Cybernetica list, it was Scoria, I know he's a beast, uh, four, uh, eight or ten Castellax, Thralls, uh, and some Volterax. The list changed ever slightly, so sometimes I include the Volterax, sometimes I wouldn't, sometimes I'd put the Ad Secularis in, sometimes I wouldn't, but the core of it would be three Thanatar, Scoria, and ten uh, Castlax, which is a horrendous list. I totally agree. And if I've played you with that list and you didn't like it, I'm sincerely apologise. However, the the list has one major, major flaw in that it can't score unless it's got Ad Secularis in it, which most of the time towards the end, I just ran the monstrous creatures. So although I would wipe out a lot of the enemy, I could still be beaten quite quickly in the first and second turn by a player uh, accumulating sort of victory points. So although I could wipe them out to a man, they would still win the game with one model and all those victory points. So, and it's the same with the Thalax as well. You know, an army with 45 Thalax and a Magos. Um, uh, it's a really tough list to play and it relies on you rolling sixes, which I don't roll all the time because you need to six up Phil No Pain to keep them alive. And then you need the sixes on the Photon Thrusters because they're strength six Lance. Um, so you need sixes all the time. Uh, well, most of the time, anyway, for larger, kind of um, higher valued armor. So it's a really, really tough army to play. However, personally, it's a very exciting and emotional filled game, emotionally filled game. There is some major highs and some really low lows. Um, and I don't think that would make a good Tactica video because most of you don't build lists the way I build lists. And if I look towards um, the Death Guard, I know they've been going on for a long time, but they are they are on their way. Um, my main army is going to be three Spartans filled with 20 Tac Marines and a character maybe in each or a Centurion or something or a Primus Medica or a um, Apothecary uh, led by a unit of Terminators supported by two Dreadnoughts. You know, and that's pretty much going to be three, three and a half K. Now... You know, a lot of you are saying, well, where, you know, where's your where's your destroy unit or where's your flamers and where's this and where's that? Yeah, you're right. But I, I think because most people in general build an all round list or they build a fluffy list or they but they build it around the special rules. So, you know, if you take Death Card, for example, lots of flamers and stuff like that. Um, I don't build a list like that. I like it. I just want to throw down 60 tech marines or 75 tech marines uh, if I don't put the characters in them. Uh, so we'll see, but I feel because most people don't do those weird lists, it's the channel's responsibility to do those lists, to showcase you, well, what if, what if we have an army of Thalax? What if we have an army of Legio Cybernetica? What if we've got an army of hundred tac Marines? So that's why I build weird and wonderful lists because most people don't. Um, and I get why you wouldn't build this list because they're not very effective. And let's face it, we all want to win a game or two and I tend to lose more than I win. So, you know, let me do all the losing uh, and you have your cool list and, and do what you want to do in your hobby. But it is not my position to say you should take a Spartan full of this or you should take that Terminator unit or you should take that HQ. That's not where I am in this hobby. And lots of people say you should take this unit for maximum effectiveness against X, Y, and Z unit. But if I'm honest with you, if we all sit down and read the rule book and we understand how AP works, we understand how many shots you can get off and you understand basic law of averages, you can work out how effective a unit is. There's, there's so many posts on Facebook saying, oh, how does this unit perform? How does that unit perform? But you can only answer that if you have the whole picture. So, you know, X person probably plays against Y person 99% of the time, and that person has that particular list. So maybe that unit doesn't perform very well because that person plays that particular list all the time. But if they went to a tournament or they went to another gaming group or played against five other peoples, that unit who doesn't do very well against that person might do really well against Bob, Fred, but not very well against Mandy and Sandy. Who knows? So, you know, you get these posts all the time on Facebook. Oh, what unit do you reckon I should take? What should I upgrade with? Or what should I put transport shuttle them in? And there's no answer to that. You, you will only get the answer of some guy in Scotland or some guy in Devon saying, well, I've ran them with this, this and this against that, that and that. And you can never know every permutation and every, every outcome. So you just have to read the rules and try it. And that's the, that's the best way. So I know that was a really long answer and I'm so sorry. Um, so yes, we could do them, uh, but I'm not going to do them because uh, I don't think I should tell you how to play your game. And that's the, the real super simple answer to that. 
Centurion, Mornivale events. A lot of you have asked for those games. Yep. And it was my plan to do a load of those over Christmas, but um, <laughs> here we are. Because uh, Boris has been really good. He's uh, he Between the lockdowns, he's come over in the evenings. So he's done his day's work. Then he's driven over to, to here and we've filmed some smaller games. And that's why the games have been quite smaller point recently, uh, because I can't always guarantee Boris back on the second night. So we need to get a game filmed in one night. Uh, and we can't always do that. So yes, particularly when we go to Australia, we will definitely do some more of our uh, events rules and we'll have the guys that have developed that rule set. We'll get them on, we'll get an interview, we'll review their armies and we'll play a ton of games. So I promise you they will come providing free travel is available between Australia and New Zealand. But also as well for the person that I hire in Auckland, this will be really something we can do really easy on a Monday morning get a game out for you guys and then uh, get a bigger game, three, 4K game done on a Tuesday and get those edited and done for you ready for a Friday. So 100% they will come. My main focus though, uh, between now and March will be larger 3K games to get the content back on the channel for you guys to watch um, uh, and then to provide content in that transitional period. So um, maybe not in the short term, but definitely 100% in the long term. The next question I get asked all the time is about uh, viewing content. So a lot of you now want to download stuff to your smart device so you can watch it on the bus or watch it on a long car journey or on a plane or wherever you're going and, and take the content with you and watch it and consume it in a, in a format that suits you. Um, we can do that and that requires an app. However, app technology, well it's not really technology, but having an app is really expensive. And you could have an app tomorrow, uh, but then I could buy no camera equipment. I couldn't buy anything because it would just suck all the money the channel makes. It is really, really super expensive. Now, if you work in app development and you can say, well, actually, no, it doesn't. It costs pence, which I don't think it does. Um, please get in touch, david at 30 channelcom I would love to talk to you about that. Um, uh, I do want to make some changes to the website. I know the website is slow and I know the search function is pretty terrible. Uh, but to do that, I need to invest some money into it because it needs upgrading. Uh, I am looking at perhaps hosting the games on a server, a different server, which will make it a little bit more quicker. Uh, but again, cost, cost, cost. You've got the decision. You can either I buy models and equipment to produce shows or you can have um, about a report on a bus totally your decision but um yeah that's tough but it just needs money you know and but yeah if you work to a web developer and you can help me out please get in touch but uh yeah that's a tough one it just requires money which um which we've got some but we haven't got a lot beginner shows i get asked all the time to film beginner shows and do you know what you're right it's a really great idea the reason why i haven't done that in the past is because Oh, I guess I guess ignorance is the, is the right word for this. You know, I've been playing Heresy a long time. I know how to play the game, as I'm sure 99% of you guys do as well. And I've always assumed, whether it was right to or not, that the channel went out to people that already knew Heresy. And that's why I've kind of haven't bothered with those shows because I figured, well, you'll if you're watching this channel, you're probably a veteran player anyway. Because, and the reason why I say that is because. If you're into heresy, there's a cost associated with heresy because it is expensive. A lot of it is resin, all comes from the UK. Uh, it's expensive to ship to other countries and, and just the base cost of uh, a Sakaran or a Spartan is really expensive in other countries, some more than others, mainly New Zealand, Australia, which is where I'm going, which is not good. Anyway, um, so th there's a cost to the channel. There's a cost to entry, unfortunate, but it's a fact. Um, and also... The most heresy players tend to be a little bit older. They've got a little bit more disposable income than maybe someone who's coming into the hobby, particularly into 40k Age of Sigma or, or those skirmish type style games because it's a lot cheaper. So I figured I'll pitch the channel at more of a mature audience. And I think that's where the kind of the less banter comes from because I'm not naturally a bantery type person. Um, I'm, as I said, mentioned earlier, I'm a little bit more kind of uh, a bit more stuffy, uh, but that's because I'm I'm a bit older than than uh, than a lot of uh, people that collect 40k and stuff. So so that's why I've never really done beginner videos because I've always assumed that you're my kind of age and my sort of job and, and you know and, and your hobby and heresy is probably very very similar to mine and that's why I've pitched the channel at that particular at that particular entry point. Um, however, that being said, there is probably uh, an avenue for um, 
um, uh, easier shows to watch maybe. So smaller battle reports that go into a lot more in depth. But then what you tend to happen is if you try to film those shows for a younger or a, a more uh, a, a newer person to the hobby, then what you do is you then focus that content onto that and you take your focus away from those three, three and a half point games for the veterans out there. And then those guys who have that little bit more money that can afford the luxury of subscribing to a subscription-based service, they go, well, this guy's producing content for how to move and how to shoot. I already do that. I want to know how 20 las cannons into a Titan goes off, not how to shoot a bolter into, into a Marine. So, so then they can tend to drop off and then they take their money away with them. But then these guys, because they're trying to buy models and paint and they're trying to get into airbrushing or they're trying to get more models and they're trying to these rules out, they haven't got the money to subscribe to the channel. So some of those shows might filter onto YouTube, which is a good thing. But then because they're not paying a subscription fee to me or to the channel rather, I don't have money to then buy models and new equipment. So it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a vicious circle really. You know, I could spend months and months filming these really little intro shows and, hey, you know, this is how you move and this is move recover and this is the Monstrous Creature special world and stuff. But then, as I said, I can't film the main content and I lose subscribers and I lose subscribers, I lose money and I can't buy equipment. And then the channel all of a sudden dies over the case of six months. It dies a slow death because all of those subscribers have got disposal income have gone and I'm left with a real keen, enthusiastic heresy players, which is fantastic and we need more of them, 100%. But because they're not contributing to the channel, I fold and I can't produce content for anyone. So I have to be really careful about where I pitch the channel and who I pitch it to. Um, there is no doubt there is definitely a space for a show on YouTube for the channel to film. But it becomes increasingly hard when I have the responsibility to subscribers to produce content for them. Um, and I think that's why I've not bothered doing smaller shows because... There are hundreds of people out there that will go through the rule book and they will film movement and they will film shooting and they will film law videos and they will film a focus on the iron hands or they will film a focus on the word bearers. You know, they've come from this planet. They have those weapons. They specialize in this tactic. They do this, they do that. And so for me, because my time is so tight, I have to focus on battle reports and I don't have a lot of time to do those smaller shows. Now you could say, well, why don't you stop filming Adept Satanicus and Aeronautica Imperialis? Yep, you're absolutely right. I could stop doing that, but they are for the future. And then you could say, well, you know, these guys that are coming in on the, you know, on the periphery that want to come into heresy, they're important as well. They are. I can't produce content for everybody. It's as simple as that. I'm one person. Um, maybe in the future when I get this, this guy or this person on board, might not be a guy, um, then maybe we can look at that. But definitely in the short term, in the past couple of years, my focus has been on building the channel, building up a reputation, building boards uh, and, and getting the armies on the channel. And that's why I haven't done any of those smaller uh, kind of rules questions and those easier shows. Um, the Fall of the Aim Bite and uh, Harvest on the Black Sand did focus on those a little bit because there were 500 points going up in escalation. Um but to have a show dedicated to entry-level heresy is really hard. For me personally, there's probably someone at home says, hey, I've got four or five hours a week spare. I could film those games or fill that gap. Then you should absolutely do it. You know, camera phones on phones are amazing or invest in a decent kind of handheld camera. Uh, make a reasonably professional looking setup with some good narration. And I think you've got a fantastic channel there. So if someone wants to go away and do that, then there's a, a there's a massive space I think for doing it so so go and do it right we're nearing the end of the question so these are the, the most popular questions I get asked all the time um, Mechanicum let's talk about Mechanicum I am a huge Mechanicum fan I think they are a fantastic army to collect they are such they are so different to Space Marines um, and they have an amazing model lineup as well they've got virtually all of their models bar a couple um, and they are missing a few special weapons, but they have a ton of rules and they have really cool, interesting rules and they have a ton of models as well. And um, you can really make an awesomely flavoursome force from the Mechanicum with all the different, you know, Order Reductor and Legio Sabletica or Tagmata as well. So uh, I love Mechanicum. However, <laughs> it saddens me to say that Mechanicum games bomb on the channel. Not many people are interested in Mechanicum. And I'm sure there's a load of you out there and say, oh, I love Mechanicum games. Great. But um, 
it, whether you like it or not, heresy is dominated by the legions because it is focused around them. You know, armies like Solar Auxilla um, uh, and Militia, which have recently uh, gained in popularity in the last sort of six months a year. There's some really awesome Militia armies out there. I've got a couple on the channel as well. Um, and the Mechanicum, they are on the periphery of, of this game, of the focus of this game, um, which is a shame, really. But I totally understand it is about the Legions. It's about the Primarchs and Horus and the Emperor and that sort of thing. Um, so that's why there isn't that many Mechanicum battle reports on the channel. So if you love Mechanicum, there's not many, I'm sorry, but I have to produce what is the most popular. But don't worry, though, because I am such a massive Mechanicum fan there will be Mechanicum on the channel. We are not going to leave them behind because I do think they play such a huge part in the heresy um, and they are a really interesting force and they are tough to get to grips with. They're not impossible, they're just tough. Uh, so um, Mechanicum content will continue because I will expand on the Mechanicum um, but only after I've done uh, Sol Auxilla and the Death Guard. So uh, more to come from Mechanicum um, uh, and... Um, Adeptus Titanic as well, because that is kind of a, an arm of Mechanicum, isn't it? So uh, we will focus more on Adeptus Titanicus, so uh, way more shows to come. But uh, it's just unfortunate that Mechanicum bombs, but uh, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Right, we're down to our last three uh, questions I get asked all the time. So the, the, the next one is Battlefields. So... If you've watched the channel, you know how I build boards. I call them live battlefields, and that's because they're made from rock, sand, aggregate, Games Workshop terrain, Unreal War Gaming Studios terrain, and various other bits and bobs. And the reason why I do that is because it keeps my costs down, because a battlefield that consists of rock and aggregate can cost £100, and it can be rebuilt millions and millions of times, and it will look different every time. So that's the reason why I do that. Um, the channel has been accused of, and I accuse myself of this, um, only being abandoned cities and desolate wastelands. Uh, yep, I totally agree with you, it is. It's mainly because that's the terrain I've got, and to build a forest board or to build a, a green board um, is expensive. There's no, no question about that, because they all need purpose-built terrain. We all need some expanding foam, and we need to mould the rocks, you know, cast some rocks up, mould them into the thing, uh, and then make it all one piece to make it look really nice, then put some, you know, some flock down and some water and stuff out and that's great and i can do that no problem at all however the problem is it's it's cost and space because i can build it that's fine it costs so let's have a budget of maybe 200 pounds of board for for rocks and flock and foam and that sort of stuff it takes a huge amount of time to build if you want to do it properly you can speed build it but it won't look as good so I need time. And then after that, I'm left with a six foot by four foot sheet of foam with a ton of flock and some cast rocks in it. Now, I don't have enough room to store uh, that board. However, in the future, when I move, I will have a much larger space and I will start to build those boards. Even if you build them in half, you know, so you're, you're building two foot by three foot section, join them in the middle and cover them over with other elements, then that will work as well. But right now, since moving to this house, I just don't have space. We will have space in the future. And I have brought all of those molds, I've brought plaster, I've brought foam and all that sort of stuff. So it's all kind of packaged up neatly and nicely to go. I've done test builds, I know how to do the job, I just need to build it and have room to store it. So in the future, because the channel will be based from one place and I'm never moving ever again, I'm not going to move country, I probably won't move house for a very long time, um, it will allow us to, to do all of those boards that, that have been desperately missing from the channel. I would love to do a board in like an agri world, you know, over some sort of agrodomes and uh, and uh, industrial equipment for farming and, and septic tanks or sewage tanks or processing plants and stuff like that. I'd love to do all of that. And I've brought some models from, uh, from garden centers with you know, conveyor belts and kind of loaders and stuff. And they can be 30 KFI'd quite easily and, and repainted and made into these really awesome agridomes. And I've got sketches and I've got design ideas and stuff. So, you know, and the reason why I haven't built them this year is mainly because of time and obviously lockdown. But also, if I had built them, then I just had to either dismantle them or sell them on. And I don't want to do that. I, I, I want to keep them because they're an investment for me um, and they can be reused over and over again, but they can be moved and they can be put in different situations and whatever else. So that's why I haven't done them. 
uh, because I guess my focus has always been on the desolate cities or the abandoned cities because a lot of the battles take place on popular centres where you know it's the seat of power of that country or that planet and that's where a lot of the battlefields have happened and that's kind of played to my hand because they are easy to build and they can be built over and over and over again with the same part so so yeah better battlefields next year definitely finally it's not really a question but it's just a very f cool thing i get told all the time so wherever you are in the world there is no doubt if you're america australia or the uk there tends to be some really good gaming groups, particularly in the UK. I mean, every major town or even small village has a club, so people can go and play games and have a good time. And of course, we're, we're really lucky in the UK because obviously we've got Nottingham, which is the headquarters, for World Games Workshop based in Nottingham. I'm lucky, uh, for those of you that don't live in the UK, I, I live near Peterborough, near Cambridge, um, and uh, Forge World for me or Games Workshop HQ in Nottingham is only about an hour's drive away, an hour and 20 minutes. So really lucky. Uh, and I used to go there, I don't know, once every three months or so, just because you could, and it's nice to wander around and have a burger and buy some stuff. So it's really cool. Now, I know a lot of you don't have that, particularly maybe if you're in Europe, or I get a lot of people from Spain saying to me, hey, I collect heresy, but there's no one to play heresy with. I have to travel loads of distance to go, or, or even parts of America where um, there's not a lot of Forge World there, uh, not a lot of heresy, sorry, um, and they watch the channel to get their heresy fixed. So for me personally that's an amazing feeling that you know the the, the channel is kind of your stand-in for for heresy games so thank you so much for that and you know none of this would be possible if it wasn't for the people uh from the uk and other places that have come to us you know we've had someone from canada and uh, and america and europe that have come to the channel to play games so without those people the channel would not exist and, and i hope that you feel that the the channel is a representation of of your community, um, which I'm immensely proud of. It's, it's an amazing feeling. So if you are watching this in a, in a far-flung country that hasn't got a lot of heresy there, or even a lot of 40K for that matter, um, then I, I'm really sorry that you don't have that. And uh, I hope that the channel, um, but also other Battle Report and other YouTubers and other creators um, are, are filling that void for you because it is an amazing hobby to get into. It's so creative uh, and it requires such an amazing imagination to, to bring those ideas to life. If, like me, you're just painting models, not converting, but there are so many other, uh, there are other aspects. You know, there's obviously some amazing books and uh, and converting and collecting and, and just general game playing. It's, it's an amazing hobby to get into. So um, I'm sorry if you don't have that kind of inclusive community where you are. But And as I said, I hope the I hope the channel filled that void for you. That is the end of the Christmas special 2020. Um, it's been a wild year, 100% for both me, the channel, and for everybody in the world as well. Uh, I definitely think it's something that we never planned for, really. Well, how could we? Uh, but one of the most amazing things I've seen is that people have had lots of time and people have been working from home. So there's nothing worse, you go to work nine to five or whatever you do for a job, and then you spend an hour in a car on the way home, it's six o'clock, you get home, you've got to cook dinner, and then you get about a half hour hobby in. So at least a lot of you have finished work because you're working from home. You always finish a little bit early if you're working from home, and you've gone upstairs or you've gone into your hobby room or wherever you do your hobby on the kitchen table, uh, and you've and you've done a bit of hobby, which is, which is amazing. So I think despite everything that's happened, I think people have been really productive and we are clearing our backlogs of unpainted models, which, which could only be an amazing thing to do. So, uh, so that's been really cool to see that. There are some great people out there doing some amazing hobby and I follow tons of people on Facebook and Instagram and some of the stuff that comes out is unbelievable. You know, people converting stuff or 3D designing stuff and unreal. And, you know, people are... 3D printing now has become... Uh, a big part of our lives I think and, and people are making weapon arms and models for stuff that we're missing you know Soltar Vitz came out two days ago after being in book one however long that go it was you know and if, and if you're a mechanic and player waiting for the rest of your weapon options on your Myrmid and Destructors and, and Secutors or you're waiting for that Arl attacks to come out it's probably never going to come out and and people now are filling that void and there are some really really talented people uh, designing stuff so you know really interesting future uh, for the hobby and 
you know, and if Forge World Games Workshop don't quite get all those models done, you can guarantee somewhere in the world someone's done an alternative option or or they've filled that gap, which which if I'm honest, when I first started Heresy, I was really dead set against. But uh, I don't want to get into bashing Forge World too much here, but if they're not gonna if they're gonna produce a model with rules and no models, um Sorry, if they're going to design a rule and not produce a model, then then I think it's fair game, surely. I don't want it to be because I want them to produce the weapon option they include in the profile uh, because I'm not clever or talented enough to make my own version of weapon and I don't think I should be able to buy four different models to make one weapon for one model and I need four of them. And now I'm spending hundreds of pounds to buy all these spare parts to convert to make a weapon that should have come fresh out of the box. I don't think that's right. Um, and people, I think, are of the same mind, and that's why 3D printing has, has come into the fore so much and, and, and started filling those gaps. Anyway, I'm going off on a massive tangent. I'm really sorry. Um, I want to thank everybody that supported the channel over the last four years, and particularly this year. I was really worried that the channel would, would die off because people are losing their jobs or they're taking less money uh, and let's face it a, a channel or subscription service is a luxury um, and I uh, we have lost subs 100% we've lost quite a few subs actually uh, but uh, I don't blame you you know you, you've got to pay your rent and feed your kids and put fuel in the car to go to work so I totally get it uh, but for those people that have stayed with us um, thank you so much because without you I could not be stood here today and I could not plan the future uh, and the future is fantastic, by the way. It looks amazing. Um, also, massive, massive, massive thank you to Dan Porter at Party and Shot on Instagram. He has lent me his Imperial Fist and his Word Bearers for the best part of well, since March, so nine months. And I will probably retain them for another couple of months, I would have thought, the way things are at the moment. So, Dan, you have done the channel an absolute solid. And, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Um, also, a big thank you to Boris. Uh, Boris has been my partner in a couple of campaigns and he's really helped me um, uh, with some editing of stuff. He's a very talented guy, did, um, did uh, media, uh, a study, and, uh, and he's such a talented guy in that. And, and, and Boris, thank you so much for helping me out. Um, him and I have been developing a game that should have come out this year. It will come out next year. It's a really, really exciting uh, monsters versus robots and that's all I'm going to say about it but it is really exciting we've spent hours and hours and hours getting these rules right but um, I think we've got it um, but it is really cool and the, the armies are being or one of the armies is being painted elsewhere uh, in France um, massive thank you to Dan Wheeler who has painted the uh, Mortis House Manalax Force for the channel Fantastic painter uh, at 1K Sun on Instagram, and he uh, painted those phenomenal Thousand Suns for the uh, campaign with Pete Whitlam and his really awesome Space Wolf. So please check uh, both of those guys out, uh, Uplander and uh, 1K Sun on Instagram. And again, Dan, thank you so much for painting the models. He has a ton of my models at the moment that he's plowing through, bless him. You know, he's doing those, uh, the um, the Styrix and the Majira Knights and also the Atrapos or Atrapos as well. So there's a ton of detail on those knights and all that trim and edging. I bet he's going bonkers. So, so Dan, thank you for doing that. Uh, also, thank you to James Dilworth as well. Um, he did uh, Adeptus Titanicus for the channel earlier this year. He's a super busy boy down in London. He's got a really great career ahead of him. So he couldn't quite devote the time that I needed him to. So he's kind of doing his thing which is awesome so james thank you for your efforts uh, for adeptus titanicus uh, uh, earlier in the year and then finally julian harris uh, he has written all of the all of the little stories at the bottom so if you go to the description below of all the battle reports there is these really awesome uh, little stories and descriptions so he's done them for the best part of about a year now um, and he's really local to Boris and I, he's in Cambridge as well, and he does a really great job of that. So Julian, thank you so much. I think without those stories and having kind of that, uh, that story within a story is really, really cool. So sometimes we focus on like the, the battle at large, or we just focus on some guy tapping on his computer to call in an ordnance strike or, you know, some Marine stalking through the ruins or over a hill or something like that. So those, I think, add an extra level of uh, extra layer of um, complexity and a uh, little extra layer of interest as well. So Julian, thank you so much for doing that. Um, that's it. Um, I wish you 
a fantastic Christmas. I didn't do any social media yesterday because it was Christmas Day and I just wanted to cruise. Um, but I really hope you've had an amazing Christmas. Probably not the one you've been expecting, but uh, I really hope you've had a good one. And I am so excited to for the new year, both for myself, of course, uh, but also for the channel because I do believe uh, this next step will take the channel to the next level because I think I've... I've held off taking it to the next level for the last year because of these plans and I didn't know when they were going to come to fruition and stuff and I haven't really said much about it. So um, I'm finally glad they're coming off now and I'm really happy to have shared those uh, those things with you. So um, really exciting times. Uh, thank you so much for watching the channel this year and uh, if you're a subscriber on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel because all these things I've talked about you will help to make them happen next year. And that can only be a good thing. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, have a great new year and I'll see you in 2021. Mm -hmm.